Hey guys, this is Catherine. Um, I am here to show you how to do a Mac build for DIY loop. Now I am assuming in this video that you have done this before. So if you haven't, you definitely want to read over um, everything within loop docs or loop and learn. So for the purpose of this video, I'm in loop docs, but you can also go to loop and learn to follow those instructions for how to do the build for both browser and um, Mac. Now, anytime you're doing the loop build, you want to make sure that you're running the right uh, compatible iOS version. So your phone is up to date, up to date enough, or not too far up to date. You're checking Xcode, making sure you're running the right version of Xcode. And same with your computer, you're making sure that it is up to date or up to date enough, which you're all you're going to find here um in the docs so you know double check that every time before you build now for the purpose of this video i'm going to skip straight to build loop and i am going to scroll and find the code so here it is i'm going to copy and paste this and then we are going to search terminal which i've apparently already started to um, search for but terminal and then sometimes it'll say in here that you need to do an update when it says that uh, you just have to copy and paste what is already in there and it'll it'll do that update for um, what you need to do right here we're gonna command v and you press return we are building loop so one return we agree that this is open source. Then you can select here, either build loop or loop with patches. If you're not sure, or um, you think maybe you want to use the patches, but you don't know much about them yet, just select that because they're all going to be default off. So if down the line you decide you want to use them, you can, and you won't have to do a rebuild. So I'll just go ahead and select two. Um, with that being said, now it's gonna run through the whole downloading all the code. So we just have to wait. Now, if you're watching this, what you could do, if you haven't done yet, it does automatically sign now. So if you haven't put in your team ID yet, you can go ahead and grab that from your Apple developer account. Um, you should see it in the top right hand corner, or if you don't, you have to click uh, certificates and you'll see it down on that screen as well. Wait for it to load. I'm not going to show you how to do that because I don't want to show everyone my team ID and I'm also not going to select sign automatically when it comes up just so that again I'm not putting in my team ID but I'll I'll show you there where you would put it. How long this takes really just depends on how new your computer is, how much space it has. Um, some people it'll go super duper quick, others it might be really, really slow. It's definitely moving.
we're almost there. Okay, so now we are ready to continue and hit return. So here you would type in one. You would want to sign automatically. It's going to make your life a lot easier. Um, not that it's too hard to sign manually, but that is what I'm going to selecting. But you select one, and then it's going to ask for your team ID. You're going to put that in. Um, you do want to ensure that you're resetting those provision provisioning profiles because that is what will determine when your loopback expires. So if you don't reset the provis provisioning profiles, then you might wind up with an app that only lasts, you know, like three months or something. Um, so yes, very nice that they asked this now. We are going to do that. And we are now unlocking your phone, plugging it into the computer, which I actually don't even have my cord over here. So I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to hit return. And then Xcode is going to open up. Ready. Let's give this a second to load. Now, if for whatever reason you said that you didn't want to sign automatically like I did, then you're going, going to click loop here, go over to signing and capabilities, and you're going to log into your Apple ID to add your team account there. Another thing you're going to have to do in here is register your device. So if your device isn't registered, a pop-up thing will just come up and say um, that you need to register it if you press the play button and you start to build. So um, not a big concern, but you know, make sure all's good here. And then you're going to, once your phone is plugged in, you are going to come up here. And you no longer have to select Loop Workspace if you, um, it's been a while since you built your device. I, my phone's not plugged in, that's all, but it will come up right here. Um, if it says like um, not ready for build or developer mode disabled or something like that, you need to go back onto the docs and follow the steps to turn on developer mode. It's in your iPhone settings under privacy and security. Um, you will have to restart your phone after that, but you'll go in, you'll select your phone, and then all you have to do is hit that play button and it should build. Um, it might come up that you need to download a watch simulator. If that comes up, you do need to do that in order for loop to build. Um, and then hopefully it builds successfully. If you have build errors, um, well, then you go into the docs and look at what possibly could have called the build failed. Um, and reach out to the community if you need to. All right, good luck.